Welcome back to the Fighters Corner Podcast for another epi. In today's episode, we sit down with Mr. Miguel Iturate, or as the locals refer to him as, Miguel Iturate. I mean, what else has this guy got to do while living in Costa Rica besides talk to us, right? I mean, he doesn't want to enjoy Costa Rica? Ah, whatever. But today we pulled Andy Ruiz and went a little heavy on the boxing. We recapped this past week's fights, plus discuss what's on the horizon, as well as talked about some odds coming up. So sit back and enjoy the podcast. So who are you taking in this weekend's fights? I know who I got, and it's not who you think. So I'm going to take my picks over to the world's safest and most trusted online gambling site and make a few bets. That's right, it's BetDSI.com. With more than 20 years' experience in the online gaming industry, BetDSI has the best sign-up and deposit promotions on the web. They also boast more deposit options than any other betting site, including fast, free, and secure payouts. Also, for our listeners, they are offering a special promotion where you can build a bigger bankroll and get 100% sports cash bonus. When using our promo code, Fighters Corner, all one word, that's 50% more sports cash by using our promo code, Fighters Corner. Check out BetDSI for all your online gaming needs. Also, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like, share, all because you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Radio Player, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Tune in radio, and the guy sitting next to you on the train is probably listening to us too. And if you can, show us your support by finding us on Patreon, where you can let us know how much you love us. And if you're a fan of boxing, jujitsu, kumite, and even capoeira, go check out my guys at UCL MMA. These guys are the heavyweight champions of mixed martial arts shows. And if you think you're the next Johnny Lawrence, go to their website at uclmma.com. Shoot them an email and tell them John sent you before asking their matchmaker that you want to defend your All-Valley Karate Championship versus one of their fighters. That's UCLMMA.com. I also want to thank our new Danish friends from Denmark, Malo de Castro, who was kind enough to let us use his beats for this podcast. I've listened to his tracks and this kid's pretty talented for being this young. If you like the track being played right now, go check out his music on Spotify, and you can also find Mal De Castro on Instagram and Facebook. Go find this guy. It's pretty good music. Welcome back to the Fighters Corner Podcast. John Garoski is with me as always. And on the phone, we have Miguel Arate. Thanks, guys. Always great to be back. And, uh... I guess we're talking boxing today, right? We are talking boxing. And not only are we talking boxing, in the realm of combat sports, right now, boxing is really hot. It's been fun to watch. It's not only been fun to watch, but I'm going to tell you something. All these MMA guys that are sitting there going, MMA, 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 I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. I was one of them. Once they start catching up to what's happening in boxing... I think these boxing pay per view numbers are going to be blowing MMA pay per view numbers out. Yeah, give it a little bit of time. I mean, it's it's a slow start, and and you know, PBC. I blame this for that. I mean, the money that they've dumped into boxing, Mm -hmm. the availability that they have made it by putting it on TV, and some of the stars that they have kind of absolutely man watered those seeds. It's dragged somebody that John, you and I. Three, I'd say about five years ago, the hate and disdain that we had for boxing. Yeah, it was bitter. It wasn't hate. It was just bitter. It, anger. Yeah, it was. You're, yeah. Right. And not, not hate. The anger that we had towards the sport and what it had become has subsided. Yeah. And what's happening right now in boxing is just, it's, it's actually special. It's again. so fun to watch, man. Yeah. I, it, it really, yep. really is. The The only thing that I'm having a gripe with, and this is a small one, and we could sort of like go full circle with this and sort of comparing UFC and boxing again. UFC does a good job of uh, of putting up events. Okay, their fight quality is is actually pretty good. Yeah, no, for sure. Boxing, on the other hand, you don't always get that. No, the high end's really high, and the mid level sometimes is to be desired. Yeah, but the high end right now. Whew. Yeah. It's been it's been real fun, really, really, really fun. So Miguel, uh, take me through what happened this week, and I heard that there was a fight. 
<laughs> I, I might have so, missed it. Man, Go ahead. <laughs> no, no problem, Mike. Uh, Michael, uh, take us through here. The May 4th T-Mobile uh, Arena, I believe, in Las Vegas, Nevada, hosted the Zone Boxing, the Zone Delivery, Saul Canelo Alvarez against Daniel Jacobs. This fight a year ago would have probably been on HBO pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Here, it gets delivered in a whole new mode. Yeah, you know, um, the issue that I had leading up to this was um, my feelings of the the judges. Like when Canelo fought Triple G, I thought those were two really spotty decisions. One included possibly the greatest judge of all time that an actual movie should be made about them, and that's Adelaide Bird. And, and the girl, right? She, yes, and, yeah. and and it would be like kind of a parody of like the Batman and Joker type thing, except <laughs> the Joker would be Adelaide Bird. And I'm not saying like in terms of appearance, which is to be desired with her, but her actions, her evil actions in regards to her judging decisions, her political pandering, and how she continues to get herself put in a spot to where I believe the current day and age of social media hopefully has put an end to but in regards to the judging scorecards john did, did you t- get to take a look at them yeah i did like and normally on these big fights what i like to do is i like to just grab a pen and paper mm-hmm. um i pull it out right before the fight starts and i will just score my own uh rounds okay and how did you feel about this because i i have a pretty i i've got a definitive opinion of what what took place well w- well what i do is i don't I don't start scoring my rounds, like counting the tally on who's winning, who's losing, up until the very end. Right. So I'll I'll fill it out, I'll flip it, and it's a fun exercise to do. I mean, anybody to sort of like, uh, if you want to add that extra layer of, of entertainment and excitement, do that. I mean, it, try it out. And it, it also, what it does is like the controversial decisions. Yeah. Because, you know, if some guy pulls away at the last half of the fight, or last, like, three rounds of the fight, mm-hmm. last quarter... You can kind of go back and look at your scorecard going, well, maybe it's not as controversial as I thought. Yeah, And also, too, it'll help prevent you from, like, if you're counting and you're tallying the rounds, like in that 10th or 11th round, you're like, oh, man, I I wanted Canelo to win or or I wanted Jacobs to win and I didn't give him enough rounds. I'm going to give him this 11th and 12th round. Okay, you can't do that. You can't do that. so, So what did you think of the judges scoring? Well, when I scored it, the way how I did, I, I thought that um, it was very much on par. I think my, my total was 115, 113. Which is... Which was what two of the judges scored. Yeah, and I'm so, going to tell you this. Daniel Jacobs, he had an actual shot at winning this fight. He did. He absolutely he did, and it a, drives me nuts. He had a level playing field. Ex- he had a level playing field. Um, Miguel, what were your thoughts of, of the fight in general? You know, I I did go into the fight looking at uh, some of the big picture things, like, uh, you know, another Canelo appearance is, uh, you know, the zone contract kicking in now, picking up the second fight after the Rocky Fielding fight. This is actually one of the, you know, one of the bigger high-profile fights um, that you're going to get Canelo in here, I think, you know. Um, So uh, I I was looking at that. I wanted to see the zone's delivery and things like that. In terms of the judging, um, you know, Right off the bat, I, I don't like that they sort of kind of agreed to, um, you know, not really mix it up. You know, I would have liked to have seen Jacobs probably throw about 20 punches more around. I agree with that. That would have taken some of the question out of it. And I thought he was equipped to do that because he was showing good movement and stuff. He was. But there were times where he got stuck in exchanges and, and it didn't work out that way. And then... From there, even rounds, you kind of have to think uh, that one went to Canelo. Yeah, you know, I, I, John and I, we, we, you know, we kind of usually go back and forth in regards to the fights. And John, you believe that he took a few rounds off? I, I do. I think like rounds. I think it was five, six, and seven, or maybe six, seven, and eight. Like I didn't see a lot of Daniel Jacobs as much as I did with Canelo. The pressure. The pressure was yeah. definitely there. It's like he I, I honestly think no, no, he took the he should have off. he should have applied more pressure. Well it, he, it he, wasn't there. That was yeah. a big difference. I had between... that exact same feeling in round either ten or eleven. I was he had just hurt Canelo with one of the bigger punches he landed the whole fight in one of the in, in round eight or nine right there. Yeah. And then he was okay, but then instead of 
upping the pressure again, he did take a round off at some point, and it was maddening. Well, that that was the big difference, I thought, between Canelo and Jacobs. See, Jacobs, he came out of the gate good and tough. Uh, the first couple of rounds could be debatable. I thought that he wasn't backing down. No, no, he was. He he, he was, wasn't playing second horse. He, he definitely was. But the thing is, I thought Canelo had the same intensity from round one to round twelve, and that's why he deserved to win that fight because he didn't he didn't take any rounds off, and unlike if, Jacobs who did. And if you look at body type, like if you look at like Canelo's body type, one, yeah, I I think there's issues there. Like he doesn't really pass an eye test. He keeps going up in weight, and he's uh, looking more and more jacked. Mm-hmm. His body is not built for a marathon. Like he's he he's got a power base in terms of like his structure. Mm-hmm. If you really want to beat Canelo, you got to put tons oh, yeah. and tons of pressure yep. on high him. volume punching is going to beat Canelo. Well, it it'll it'll help you yes. beat Canelo. I'm it, not going to say it's going to guarantee you a win, it, but, but, but it'll help you significantly in in terms of strategy. If you want, if you're fighting Canelo. Whatever your punch output is, increase it, double it. Yep. It, as ridiculous as that's, like, oh, you want, I throw hundred punches around. You want me to throw two hundred? It's At impossible. Two fifty. Two fifty. I, I agree. But if you want that fight, yep, you're gonna have to do it. Yep. And and unfortunately, whenever you double whatever output you have, a guy like Canelo, whose fight IQ obviously is through the roof. Oh yeah. All he's doing is just he's gathering information. He's just looking, looking. Ah, ah. He's just getting intel. Incredibly <clears throat> intelligent as far as boxing. And his counter ability, like, sometimes... Defense was disgusting. And, and sometimes, like, when, when people... Well, and I think it was the fourth round, the defense, uh, the head movement of Daniel Jacobs. Were, uh, people were talking about the fourth round in mm-hmm. regards to his head movement is some of the best yeah. that they've seen. So, but, but with Canelo, like, unfortunately, whenever you're doubling your, your output... You're also doubling your chances of him countering and hurting you. So you've got to be a phenomenal nail outside of just being a hammer, and that's how. That, I mean, that's that's how you're going to beat him, dude. You're you're going in. Whenever you're you're, you're taking a ten million dollar payday, you're you're not coming. You, the next two or three days, you're going to be laying in bed going, "Oh shit!" Mm-hmm. You know, I got a, a, a train wreck. You have to. Your output's got to be through the roof. Yeah, I um. I gained a little bit more respect for Canelo, too. you know, and, and I walked into this fight not rooting for Canelo, not rooting for Daniel Jacobs. You know, I, I thought that Jacobs had a chance, and he did, and I, I thought he didn't take advantage of it. Like I said, he gave up those, those, uh, those, those few rounds. I think he's got some regrets today. I think he does, too. I mean, when, you, when, you probably, when he probably woke up this morning, he's probably like, hey, let me watch his fight footage, and he's like, man, what did I do in round six, seven, eight? What was I thinking about because I wasn't thinking about this fight? Well, uh, you know, but you also only have so much gas in the tank, too. Yeah, though. Like, I, you've got to pace yeah, yourself for those yeah, championship rounds. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe, maybe that's what he was doing, you know? Yeah. And what I noticed, too, his his corner picked up on what I picked up on, or I, or actually I I should correct myself and say I picked up on what his corner already knew because in between rounds you hear his corner saying, "Dude, you know, turn up the pressure." Yeah, playing you know? patty cake out yeah. there. You know, you're jousting. You yeah, know? Well, let's get some offense going. Yeah. yeah, and and like I said, I, I I do respect Canelo more as a boxer. Not to say that I never did before, but you're starting to see his greatness. You know what I mean? Like he, I thought he looked better yesterday than he did versus triple G. Hey, you know, I think, I think triple G won both of those fights. Yeah. One for sure. The other one. Well, yeah. Okay. Drawn a second one, but he definitely won the first fight. I, I, I think so. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, what about the day zone production, Miguel? I'm interested in what you thought about that. You know, I, I'm in Central America, so I don't see the full blown zone production, but they were, you know, you can see the logos, you could see um, that uh, on social media they were putting out the, the same level, so they made a big show and a big production of it. Now, what I wonder is how, what does that turn into the zone? Now, if you, there, there are a couple of different types of people, right? People have already, and I understand that the, the zone is twenty bucks a month now, right? That and is you can ridiculous. still find the internet pages of the zone that have been updated to, to, to with the new price. So. You know, okay, little things okay, like wait. that are always like little cracks in the armor in my book. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, they still have typos in their website. You know what I mean? So, but, um, I, but, no, uh, you know, I, to I, their credit, they had Bellator early in the day. And, uh, you know, they were from Birmingham, England. So they were delivering fights all day. And, uh, you know, the fights were good. So, Okay, now, John, you said 20 bucks a month is ridiculous, right? I think so. Okay, all right. What did you pay for the Triple G 
Canelo fight? Probably like 75 bucks. Okay. So you're about six months in right there. Yeah, I mean, but... <laughs> do, 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 do you see the what you're saying? Like, I get it's 20 bucks a month. Okay, uh-huh. if, if you were to guarantee me, okay, a high-profile, pay-per-view-type event in boxing every month on the zone, it's worth it. But what's the next one? What well, what's the next one that the zone's offering? Is it is uh, it's it's not Wilder, is it? Wilder's no, fighting. I think Fury's, uh, no, Wilder's, no, Fury. on Wilder's, yeah, Wilder's on Showtime. Yeah, Fury's on Wilder's on Showtime. No, you've got Anthony Joshua Jr. Anthony, first against yes, my fault. Uh, okay. Andy Ruiz Jr. and uh that's and Madison zone, Square Garden. Right? That, that would that's be the, the next zone. big fight. Okay. How are they going to square all of this up with all these guys signing with different like uh, providers? How, how is this going to work out? It, yeah. it seems to like the heavyweight division. I'm not going to call it a mess because that's not the the proper word. I would shambles isn't a proper word either. It just seems like the stand still. It's like you've got all these ships ready for battle in the same harbor. But no one's willing to undock their ship and take it into the high seas so they can start firing at mm-hmm. each other. You know, like it seems like people like DAZN, Showtime, they've actually complicated this more than it has. Like trying yeah. to kind of like make it easier. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that, Miguel? Yeah, I mean, keep in mind uh, what it is is I think the zone has come on the scene very quickly, and I think that this has affected people on the UFC side as well. Uh, not the zone in particular, but their ESPN contract came upon them very quickly. So what do I mean? Uh, you got a guy like Anthony Joshua who's with a representative representation contract with Eddie Hearn, and um, you know. So he's already signed and he's already got more or less of a structure of how he gets paid. And if, you know, that's pay-per-view shares. And, you know, I imagine in London when he's in a stadium, it's ticket sales and things like that. So he knows his package, right? And, you know, pay-per-view now goes away and there's his own money. And it's like, oh, yeah, we'll cover whatever's up, you know, uh, whatever you got on your last pay-per-view, we'll make sure you get the same. So, yeah, people will take that. But at the end of the day, if the zone is really clearing a lot of money and the promoter is clearing a lot of money, then there's a lot of contracts that are going to get have to get restructured for people to actually enjoy get, you know, getting the bump of that money. I don't think that's just going to be easy. I think Donald Cerrone in the UFC side re- referred to it, that, you know, that we're under contract, man. So, and those contracts are all the contracts didn't take these, they go, these um, relationships into account when they signed it. If you're... If you're on an eight fight deal with a promoter and you're on the fifth fight of that deal that you signed three years ago, what the fuck do you think that contract says about the zone or about sharing, you know, plus apps and things? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that too. I mean, uh it's 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 gonna be tough and it I think this is still the uh the learning curve for, for not only the zone but also subscribers and the fans. Miguel, let me let me kick this back to you as well. well one last thing. Do you think the fans need a triple G versus Canelo rematch or a three to complete the trilogy. Is that necessary? Do you think both fighters want it? And should we get it? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I have that feeling that, that brings me, there is a greater question. I think that we're asking here and that is, is Canelo the guy, you know what I mean? Who's the guy who's going to be the Mayweather of boxing now? Because Canelo's kind of always taken that mantle say, and now it's me. But is he really the guy? Like so, so here we have a, tr- a trilogy match against the guy who was undefeated before running into him, and people are like, "Hey, you know, I'm not really that interested." That's not a great sign for the zone that threw you know four hundred million dollars at this guy, right? Mm-hmm, so, right. so I don't know. To me, the fight, the like Love can do exactly what we always said. Oh, they better get this done, or he's going to get old. Well, they let him age. Mm-hmm. They let him go ahead and sign to fight other guys. Uh, uh, other levels, he did chase him out of his own. Hopefully, he got some money and stuff. He was at the show yesterday, Golovkin's, um, or this weekend, and Golovkin is a, 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 not a huge soundbite guy, but he said that the fight was born, that both guys are good fighters, and that they should have given more than they did. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, you, you could put him in against either one uh, at this point. But, um, yeah, that to me is going to be the big question, is who lines up next for... Uh, Saul Alvarez, and does it move the meter? Because to me, the Triple G match 
they're going to get it done, I think. And it's going to be a decent payday for everybody. And the zone, you know, may at one point wish they didn't have, you know, that on their books that they paid for. But um, I think they're going to get it done, even though I don't think it's, it's going to move the meter. Well, you know, you, you had mentioned, like, social media. I just went to Dazone's Facebook page. They've got 1.1 million likes. Mm -hmm. How many advertisements did you have for the Canelo fight, John, popping up in your feed? I don't I don't remember seeing any. It. No, okay. I don't remember seeing okay. it. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're signing guys to more than a quarter of a billion dollars, and your social media, as Miguel had pointed out, has got some issues on it, it seems like a shell game is being played here. Yeah. So, like, if, if, if I'm promised $300 million, and, like, let's just say I'm, like, a training partner, or, here, John, you're get, I, uh, you got $300 million coming from a company. I'm a training partner. I'm coming to you going, dude, uh, I haven't seen one ad for your fight yet. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would try to cash those checks at the currency exchange <laughs> the minute you get them. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> you know, I would use a different ID. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get you a fake ID. Where Canelo is going to sign it over to this guy. Yeah. That way, you're not on a hook for it. <laughs> right, right. 300, how many $5,000 checks does $300 million? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I got some IRS issues. Yeah. <laughs> Canelo's got 800 identity theft yeah. charges. Yeah. The guy just cashing checks. Yeah, yeah, I know a guy. <laughs> Miguel, what's what's next? What's next for Triple G? He's going up against uh, Rolls, right? Yeah, and uh, I, did that move the meter for everybody? Even Triple G, and you know, it, it was like, who is this guy? Yeah. And yes. um, you know, and you, I, I don't want to disrespect you know the opponent or anything like that, but here's a guy that it reminds me of when Triple G was his top rank, and he was coming off, I believe, uh, the Lemieux destruction. And they were touting Turiano Johnson as a potential opponent. Yeah. And that's what this guy reminds me of, Turiano Johnson. Well, the reason, the reason why I ask that is because, I mean, um, Triple G's fighting again. He's fighting, what, uh, second week of June? Something like that. So, I mean, you figure Triple G's got a match within, you know, six weeks of Canelo. So, like, I think they did that pretty much on purpose. Because now they both will be yeah. off of fights around the same time. It's not like Triple G's got a fight in July and Canelo's sitting you know, for an extended period of time. I mean, they're both going to be coming off of fights relatively, you know, around the same time. We might see a September, you know, end of this trilogy. If you look at it on the calendar, I think it's possible. Definitely possible. I agree. Yeah. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. I just don't, I'm I'm not that happy to see it, but you're, you're absolutely I right. Am. I think that. I was entertained, that has man. A high really potential was. of happening, especially because at this point, Triple G really, I, I think the the only real solid business plan that he can do is he has to become a hitman and take as many fights as possible, grab as many paydays as possible, because he's now officially on the B side of his career. He's got to know Canelo in September will pay him more than Steve Rolls in June. So, yeah, you could sign him up. I, I, well, that's for the payday. But, you know, when you're from Kazakhstan, the Eastern European mentality is much different than you can find either in Europe or the United States. And mm -hmm. the mentality in Europe is different than here as well. Yeah. Even Canada. Like, there's, I, I can give you dozens of examples in terms of, like, thought process, you know, the, uh, in regards to, like, conversations you have with people from different countries. Yeah. Although oh, we're I the don't same. disagree with you at all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> although, although we're the same, we're also very different. Mm -hmm. And when you're from Kazakhstan, you know, the way of life there is, is uh, unimaginable you know, in, in terms of like what we experienced growing up. And when that statue of Triple G gets erected and they put his record on the statue, I I think he's going to be a little angry at the two losses he's got mm -hmm. because really only one is justified. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, that, that's like a, a gritting your teeth justified. I, I don't know if I'd give like, I don't know if I'd give Canelo a third opportunity to beat you a third time because, yeah. Well, he, he said that he – Canelo said yesterday that he's not interested himself in fighting him again. But He shouldn't be. He, but he also said if that's what the fans want to see, which I do, then – I'm going to be hard. It's going to be hard. You know, 20 bucks a month, I'll pay for that. Yeah. 
you know, I'll probably cancel my subscription immediately after <laughs> it. Um, but twenty dollars a month, I'm willing to pay for that. Okay, but it's I don't know. I it's just it it reeks of the old school boxing issues that um, you know that that made us despise where, what the sport had become five years ago. You know, Miguel, you said that Anthony Joshua and, and uh, Andy Ruiz Jr. they're out, they're also going to be on the zone too, correct? Yep, that's exactly right. That's June first. How's that bout looking for you? Uh, you know, I mean, Joshua's probably a plus, you know, a minus two thousand favorite, and Ruiz probably about plus twelve fifty. So, um, you know, that's Ruiz a late replacement, obviously for Darrell Miller. So those odds are pretty fresh, and that means that you know. Ruiz not really being given much of a shot. So, um, you know, it, you don't see that type of odds on the UFC side. The, no. You know, four figure odds like that, even no. for, you know, world title fights and things like that. So, at the end of the day, for all the hype that Andy Ruiz is that you're going to hear and about how, <laughs> you know, bad he is and how Mexican, you know, hard he has and how this is an opportunity for a lifetime and however they're going to spin it, at the end of the day, the books will give you $1,300 if you bet $100 on Andy Ruiz and he wins. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's not likely to happen. This is a purely a showcase fight introducing Joshua to us. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, so Miguel, I'm going to give you three names. Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury. For some reason, the boxing gods are not allowing us to really kind of put a fine, you know, finalization in regards to who the best is. So they keep fighting, you know, whether it's no names or, you know, lopsided odds types fights. One of those guys is going to screw up and lose. Which one of those three do you think it's going to be? I have my answer. Go ahead, John. What do you got? I think it could be Joshua. I think it, you know, I think it's Wilder. Really? Yeah, he's too wild. It, uh, well, why? I mean, he hits like a truck, but you know, and and especially in the late rounds. But he's just he's too sloppy. He's not disciplined. I don't think I, he listens. I don't know if it's sloppy. It, it's his he's brawler. Sloppy. Don't don't say it's his, it's sloppy. It's his brawler style of boxing. You know, oh, okay. It, it's, it's you call it whatever it is you want. I'll call it it's, it's undisciplined boxing. How much would the world crumble around Anthony Joshua if he came to the United States to a country <laughs> that he's trying to promote for himself? Huge time difference. Yes. He's coming in as a minus 2,500, and he loses to An- Andy Ruiz. Like, how much of his world crumbles if that happens? And I'm not saying that it will, but what, what, what type of world are we living in if Joshua loses to Andy Ruiz? Look, Ruiz is a pro, and he's going to come in and give it a shot, and... You know, he is a decent fighter. Joshua, there's still, you know, parts of him that are incomplete. You know, they've been bringing him along real well, and he's been holding the belts and stuff, so he's got the number one spot. But there are parts of his game that are still incomplete. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you never know. But it would be the type of, it would be an earth-shattering thing. Not on just a couple of notches below Tyson and, uh, Douglas? Um, Buster Douglas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, just only a couple of notches below because no one expects Joshua. Now, in the case of Wilder, I think you can build a better case for Brazil. Brazil really, you know, hasn't moved the, the bar in, in terms of driving anybody crazy. Um, but an Olympian at some point, you know, has the amateur pedigree um, that Wilder, you know, as the bronze bomber, gets credit for it, but at the end of the day, he's a guy who still took up the sport late and had, you know, under 50 amateur fights, Brazil, over that. So he's a guy who's put in the work, and, um, you know, he's had time uh, with Joshua in the ring, and that's the kind of thing that makes you a better fighter. Uh, you know, sometimes a, a good loss like that will make you a better fighter, and Brazil's mm-hmm. got the experience of facing Joshua. Now he goes in to face Wilder, and, uh, you know, Wilder... You know, there's... Miguel, hold up. Who is going to lose out of those three first? Like, you, I mean... Yeah, I want to hear this. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's what I'm interested in. Wilder? Fury, yeah, I would, I would go Josh? Wilder as well. Yeah, I'd go Wilder as well. well. So go ahead with your I, I would go Wilder. Yeah. 
I don't go Wilder as well. The only reason is, but Wilder does come with a couple of things that if he's not the guy, then you got to say, hey, look, you know, we, we didn't assess this correctly. At the end of the day, he has Mark Breland in his corner, and that's pedigree. You know, mm-hmm. whether you like it or not, that's a pedigree. And that teaches you a lot of stuff. So he will be able to Is he listening to Mark Breland? I worry, I worry about the, what, you know, there's a line, and I hate to, to say uh, from Silence of the Lambs, it is from Silence of the Lambs, of, you know, what he is becoming. Wilder and his uh, uh, public persona have become also, as you pointed out, wilder and wilder. And I don't like it at some point. You know, mm-hmm. he kind of went from being an all sharks, you know, Alabama, uh, you know, guy, uh, you know, with, with, with the uh, child and, you know, athleticism forced yeah. on him with, you know, by circumstance and stuff like that, to now, you know, I'm going to kill him and, you know, you can't breathe the same air as me and stuff like that. It's just, it's a different rhetoric. It comes from a different place. And I don't know if I like that part. Okay, well, you, you know, the thing is, is this is what I see is going to happen. Anthony Joshua is kind of like... It's kind of like the queen, you know. He was given this throne, given this title, all the accoutrements, all all of the benefits, and he kind of looks down on everybody else, you know. Very European, you know, in regards to uh, social status. So now he's coming to the United States in order to introduce himself to us Americans. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Am I am I am I no, off on any of that? That is okay. okay. Very accurate. So now he's dealing with a monster time difference. Mm-hmm. So his fans are now going to have to be up at about 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. in order to watch his fight live. Yep. Right? Which is his fan base. He won't have the Wembley crowd behind him. Okay. And he's fighting an absolute nobody that doesn't have a single shot in hell at a pay-per-view price. What's going to happen is he is going to have his lowest draw in his entire career. And whatever foundation in regards to uh negotiating ability it's they're going to be laughing at him like Mm -hmm. he he literally just stepped in a bear trap and he doesn't even realize in regards to negotiate and 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 throwing his weight around the platform that he's been using in order to urinate on everybody else i think is going to be taken from him based on these pay-per-view numbers Mm mm-hmm it's it's going to be tough for him. I'm, I'm, I'm am am I off on anything I just no, said right now? No, I mean, um, well, I, I, it's, it's right there. Pay per view numbers where though? In, in Europe England? and here, Wait. absolutely. And I know Europe's got a well, different pay per view model. Based on the zone, here here is it's the zone membership. So yeah. it's nothing to do with pay per view. Okay. The only stat that they can provide to the public is subscribers, right? That's all they got, right? Th- th- that's that's all they have. But Unless I, they have been- if they have a war chest, I imagine they might have some uh, some type of advertising money coming in. Um, you know, they do have a limited amount of commercials, I guess, that they sometimes show. So uh, I'm not sure. But I, I will tell you this, that uh, one of the things that's accurate there, too, is that the zone is because they're the new guys, right? So so what happened? Tyson Fury went and signed with Bob Arum, and Bob Arum is firmly with ESPN, and ESPN Plus. Oh, and they happen to have the UFC too, right? So yeah. now, right off the bat, the ESPN app is a competition for the zone, and it's a monster that's out there. And at the end of the day, you're fighting the ESPN brand, which is an international brand already. Yeah. So the zone already looks hokey, like DA. You know, I can see Chinese people like DAZN. What's DA? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, it, like you, you pointed out, the name is hokey and stuff like that. ESPN doesn't have to deal with any of that. The UFC doesn't deal with any of that. Bob Arum and Tyson Fury aren't dealing with any of that. That's what they got going on. Um, on the other end, you've got Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder is still more on traditional television and stuff, but on Showtime, you know what I mean? And Showtime will put still back a big pay-per-view if they have to do it that way. And Showtime is probably not far behind in doing streaming as well. Right? Yeah. So Everyone's going to do it, right? You're in a situation there with, yeah, the zone might be the uh, the splashy big name now, but will they be there in 10 years? Mm-hmm. Because 
the ESPN game is that there was, you know, no one at ESPN is like, oh, are we running the risk of like, we won't be, you know, could we lose the company in 10 years? No, there's none of that in ESPN. That's an established, you know, yeah. that's an established company. Now, you can say the same thing for Showtime. HBO would have been better, right? But HBO being a little more powerful, maybe. But at the end of the day, Showtime still sits there. You get the premier boxing champions with them and their war chests and stuff. So the zone could very well have gobbled up what they could and now be like, you know, they got the 60% and now they're like, oh shit, what do we do? You know, what, you know what's kind of strange? And I kind of equate it to uh, late 90s, early 2000s. There was a big stock boom for like dot coms. Mm-hmm. Like if you had a dot com, even if it didn't make sense, you had just tons and tons of funding, mm-hmm. you know, and um, there was dedicated websites to these businesses that uh, F company was one of them dot com. And it was just making fun of these ridiculous business models with these with these companies that were just flush with cash that were they might as well just put it in a pile and set fire to it. Yeah. These apps that are coming out right now in regards to the fight game. It seems like that there is a uh, like a firestorm in regards to trying to corner the market. Everyone, you know, is is just trying to figure out this whole fight game entertainment thing with uh, with apps. And I, I I'm not sure it's not going to have its crash, kind of like the dot com era, you know, of the early two thousands. Like someone is going to fold. Someone's mm-hmm. going to, and it's it's going to be very public, very embarrassing, uh, potential jail time. Uh, for for some of the people, the actors that are involved, it's going to happen just like the yeah. dot com crash. Right, and you know we're all looking at each other, and I'm thinking the investors inside the zone, if they're doing their homework, all you got to do is look at their social media. I mean, if you're spending a quarter of a billion dollars, you better have thirty, forty, fifty million followers. Mm-hmm. When you're at one point one million. I, I mean, they're still young, you know. I mean, I think that the zone, without a doubt, yeah, which but, which is why you should already have your numbers up. You should have been purchasing subscribers. Yeah, like you, you should have you're like, hey, you know, the average subscriber that we get coming to into our social media costs us X amount of dollars. That should already be laid out, and based and based on their numbers, they haven't done that yet. Yeah. They probably can't afford it with what they just gave Canelo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That that brings us to Wilder Brazil Fury versus Schwartz. Miguel, what what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, we've covered Fury went with ESPN Plus, so we'll see that in the middle of June on the ESPN Plus app, mm-hmm. and with Bob Arum and pay per view, and uh, you know, uh, Fury fighting in Vegas against a European opponent. And that's purely an introduction fight again for Fury and a, a payday for Fury. Stay busy for Fury as he waits. You know, for someone to come to him and uh, produce another big fight by someone that's, you know, going to be Joshua or Wilder. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the odds on that has Fury at minus 5,000. Oh, my God. And uh, Schwartz at, at about plus 2,200. So um, just, you know, again, a pure showcase fight. And in Wilder's case, you've got Wilder favored over Brazil. That fight actually is going to be... Um, you know, you've got uh, Brazil and Wilder's actually the next one up to bat. That comes to us May 18th. Wilder at minus 800. Brazil plus 550 on the comeback. Jeez. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think there's going to be, uh, you know, all, all, all three of these guys, you know, taking these stay busy fights. I, I think eventually. Yeah. Uh, one of them's bo- going to slip. One of them's going to slip and the boxing community is going to. Kind of say, all right, we've kind of had enough with this, you know. And some yeah. someone's numbers, someone's going to get exposed. I, yeah. And I'm not saying just in the ring; I'm talking in terms of finances as well. One of those three is absolutely going to get exposed, and it's 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 going to be a lot of fodder for the other people to make fun of the other guy. And rather them than them losing in the ring to eliminate them from contention, mm-hmm. it's going to be based on. Well, you only got X amount of likes on your last uh, post on social media, buddy. Guess mm-hmm. what? You know you're no longer in the round robin. Yeah, and, and it's, it's it's kind of ridiculous, but that that's where it seems the sport has gotten to at yeah. this point. 
Miguel, why do you think yeah. that, that Tyson Fury is, is at a minus 5,000 versus uh, Tom Schwartz? Tom Schwartz, from my understanding, is like a top German prospect. I think I think he might have one or he or no losses. I, I don't remember uh, exactly what it was. It might he might have one loss. I, okay, probably I early in his career. Yeah, I but think early it was. In, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, but like I, I on paper I respect Tom Schwartz, and for him to be, you know, at that much of a dog. Like, like if there's a wild card, that's the one you're picking. <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Okay. Could be. Could Yo. be. Why do you think that, Miguel? Well, look, the problem to me is there are levels in this game. And, you know, you, you really have uh, Fury, who right now is operating at, at the highest level of the heavyweight division. There's, there's, you can't, you can't argue really that. put that much, you, yeah. you know, that's not in dispute or anything like that. So, he looks so you've got a situation also. where you're talking about, about the world's elite guy, and, and he does it with, uh, you know, a joy of life, a joie de vie, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> he does, he, 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 he's not your typical heavyweight who's trying to take your he- head off, right? Yeah. So you've got... You've got Fury who does that sort of stuff. And, you know, he got dropped twice against Wilder, but other than that, he probably won every single round. And, um, you know, once we start looking even at BoxRex ratings, I think BoxRex ratings show and understand that there are going to be, um, you know, uh, levels. Tom Schwartz is 24-0, and, 0, and uh, yeah, okay. a, a top German heavyweight. Um, and so he's 37th in the world just by box rights rankings that I'm looking up online. He's got 16 knockouts. And the, the, just the level of competition on the German scene is going to put him firmly on a regional level, I think. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be somebody that Fury can actually, um, you know, is going to dance circles around. He can go to 12 rounds. He's done it with much higher level people. And to me, Tom Schwartz, hopefully he proves me wrong. But to me, Tom Schwartz, go ahead and look up David Hayes' last opponents before he ran into Tony Bellew after his comeback. He found Anthony Gerjaj, I think, was the name of one of the fellas, and uh, the other guy was Demory or something like that. Out of these were guys with undefeated records on the club scene as well, and it just is a different level. Do you know the paydays on that fight? Do you happen to know it off the top of your head, Miguel? No, on the Fury fight, I do not know. I don't know what they would have bought in for Schwartz. Um, uh, I'm Fury, interested in that. Again, signing, signing on with ESPN, there was talk of it being a three-fight deal for $100 million or something like that as they toss numbers around. But, yeah. you know, I don't think, again, at the end of the deal day, I think that those are publicity blurbs that are being put through, like Canelo's $365 million. He didn't get handed a quarter of a million dollars, you know. It's spread out over the 11 fights and percentages and this and that and yeah. the other thing. I wonder, so, if he's, um, I wonder if he's also responsible for his opponent's purse as well, you know, when they're forking over that type of money. You know, there's a lot of times you'll see that. Like, and I, I mean, on regional shows, like, okay, we're going to give you like two grand, but uh, you're bringing your opponent on your dime. Wow. I, I, uh, I just pull up on my phone now. Um, I Googled real quick the... Um, Tyson Fury blurb with with ESPN, or I should say Top Rank, but in an official press release, Top Rank did confirm that Fury will have a minimum two fights per year in the U.S. in this contract. So you're you're going to see Tyson Fury minimally twice in the year. He's basically an American fighter now. Wow, wow. that's crazy. That is crazy. So they're they're going to try to push his brand. He they're might move tr- here. <laughs> you might as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of trailer parks in uh, Illinois that he'd probably be welcome like to. Like the giant converted Greyhound bus from <laughs> Europe, Miguel. Uh, how many cargo ships do you think they need to bring that over? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Miguel, is there any fights coming up with odds that interest you in regards to boxing and any any glaring uh, any glaring holes that we could jump through? Yeah, in regards who, to action. Where am I putting my $100 uh, this coming up month? Well... You know, we just went over some of the heavyweight odds, and it's kind of a, a scarce enticing. window. Yeah, a scarce window there, right? You know, nothing yeah. enticing there. But um, let's go ahead and focus on Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz Jr. And that's June first. And if you've got a little bit of a soft spot in your heart for the uh, for the plump Mexican, uh, the, the over under set at. <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the, the over Mexican, under, is that what we refer to him as? Yeah, we can call him the plump Mexican. I mean, if he wins, he's going to get the, the plump Mexican with the little heart. <laughs> but for right now, he's just a plump Mexican. But overall, I mean, as we say to Ruiz, you know, you can knock him and stuff. And um, He's got heavy hands. But he's a sturdy fighter, and the over-under set at just six and a half. The over paying plus 100, so that's even money. And then that might be, you know, uh, a little bit of a, um, you know, uh, something that super enticing if you're looking for major odds and stuff like that. But at six and a half rounds, I think you can expect Rui to do that, especially with Joshua's first opponent. Um, I'm not sure that that's not the best one I see. I can spot anywhere in the heavyweights. That's interesting. Yeah, it, it's. I'm not sure how to approach that because I think that Joshua, you know, coming into the United States wants to make a statement. And the best way to make a statement in boxing is to knock a dude out, you know, and earlier in the round rather than late. So, I mean, like, just looking at it on paper, if I were to put money down on any of these uh, odds that I'm seeing in front of me, I'd probably do Andy Ruiz, the, the, I think the, I think it said at six and a half. And I'd probably take the over, but at the same time, too, I'm scared a little bit because this is Joshua's first fight in the States, and he's going to want to make a statement. You know what I mean? And the best and way to make a statement. If you want to do the under, the under is at minus 130, which is really not extreme yeah. for laying out money. So, so you um, would go to. You really feel that, you know, both that, that may be the most better number, you know, presenting itself. So you would go to betdsi.eu and throw in a promo code Fighters Corner. And you throw some cash on that, John? Is that what you're saying? That's what not not that's not what I'm saying. That's what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> yeah, I, you guys are just diabolical. Yeah, you know, I I I don't I don't I don't I don't uh have a lot of action in regards to uh you know the fights and stuff like that, but occasionally I do. I I do enjoy it. I, I do enjoy it occasionally. Yeah, I actually went to bet the SI yesterday before the Canelo fight and uh threw a hundred bucks down and uh Came up on top a little bit. That's Got good. basically free dinner. That's good. <laughs> good. Excellent. Miguel, thank you so much. Hey, you know, a, a, as always, an absolute pleasure having you on. And we look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks, Miguel. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. It. And uh, I appreciate the time as always. And uh, catch up to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks.